Hey Aries, how are you doing? This reading is for Aries for the week of September the 2nd to the 8th. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Keep in mind this is a general read. Take what resonates and leave the rest behind. And Aries, if you're new to my channel, I'm an Aries rising and your rising sign is as important as the other signs that I listed off. So I get you guys. I feel you guys. I'm here for you guys. This is a safe place to be. So chill out, relax, and enjoy the reading. And if you'd like to book a private reading with me, you can do so in the description box below. Click on the link. It will take you to the website and you can check out the options there. What is going on for the magical and most fabulous Aries? What do you need to know? What do you need to see for your highest good? Present time, the Eight of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. What's coming towards you? The Nine of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. What you are focused on is the Chariot, Major Arcana for Cancer. In your blocked and challenged position is the Lovers, Major Arcana for Gemini, and your outcome is the Four of Cups, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Energy. Okay, Aries, let's clarify this and find out what is going on. So right off the get-go is what you fear here. There's something that you want to go towards, and that's a fast moving energy. This is fast, fast, quick, quick. And at the bottom of the deck, you have the star. So fear it and do it anyways. Because what you fear is what's actually going to set you free. Because it says the angel of guidance. But it feels like you want to rush through some kind of process. So that eight of wands is vitality velocity, and high vibrational energy. So this could be energy that you are exuding at this time, but it sp speaks of journey and travel. There also could be something about mother. There's also in your blocked and challenged position, a choice or a need for you to be vulnerable and transparent and honest about some kind of situation. Like there's a need to vocalize something. And I feel like there's a fear here. There also could be distance. So like this is communication coming in or outgoing at a distance or there's travel, travel plans that you are making. I also feel like something that you're really passionate about or really enthusiastic about. Um, there's a little bit of overthinking it. Like, um, what if it doesn't work out? But what if it does? So a needing to see the positives of it. Yeah, and I posted um, a picture actually on YouTube the other day, which is, it's not the destination. It's about enjoying the journey. So here, it's asking you to enjoy the journey. The journey is of what leads you to the goal, right? The success, victory. Oh, I want to um, use this other deck. I'm so busy chit-chatting here. What is this? Eight of Wands? This is also excitement in the air, receiving some kind of good news. And the Nine of Wands. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Energy. And the Nine of Wands is the wounded warrior. You've put in a lot of hard work and a need for you to listen to your body. When your body says take rest, take rest. Nine of Swords is also anxiety, fear, worry, frustration, and the analysis paralysis. It's about thinking and thinking and overthinking and thinking about a person, place, or a situation to death to the point where you're paralyzed and can't take action. You're so paralyzed in some kind of thought process or pattern here. But this Nine of Wands is also protecting something that you've created of yourself or a need for you to let down this guard or there is some kind of guardedness here. And if your body says take rest, take rest. If you need to get more rest and sleep, make a better bedtime for yourself. So no phones after eight o'clock, um, drinking some kind of 
herbal teas to get you into that relax and relaxation, right? Nine of Wands can also be, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of traveling or commuting for work. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of where I live. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of how I feel. It's your thoughts and this work. So needing to get more downtime for self. Let's see what this Nine of Swords is. Nine of Swords can also be like migraines or stress carrying a lot of cortisol in your body but that's you not listening to your body right so it's almost like you're in burnout mode and when you are in burnout mode it's hard to execute things but this is fast moving energy and fast moving energy or there's like a quick change that you're making and the queen of swords wow Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. And the Queen of Swords is open and receptive to conversation, but not putting up with a lot of garbage. This is also the powers of your own thoughts. So Nine of Swords is not communicating. It's doing a lot of thinking but there's a need to express yourself. But when you're coming from a place of stress and frustration and anxiety, the message that you're giving across or this person is going to be blunt, pushy, and controlling. So a need to cut out any kind of deceptive behavior of your own, or this could also be another individual who um, could be also lack of sleep. So when you are sleep deprived, you're not going to be very happy-go-lucky or this person. Six of Swords. Six of Swords, it says boundaries, but this is also getting out of choppy waters into more smoother sailings, the light at the end of the tunnel, or there's a need for you to journey and expand and explore. This is also getting some kind of great advice or insight and help, like a mediator or somebody who is non-biased, but Queen of Swords is somebody who's heavily judgmental. Okay, so you could be extremely heavily judgmental towards yourself. Where, like I was saying about, fear it and do it anyways. Because what you fear is what sets you free. So, whatever is causing this frustration, anxiety, or sleepless nights, get clarity within yourself on why you feel this way. It's never about an external person. It's always about you. And it says stress and power. But, you know, Queen of Swords can also be somebody who is single or divorced. Or somebody is actually going through some kind of nightmare of a divorce. Where they want to be set free. This is also, you know, victory, success, staying on task and laser focus. Focus on what Aries can handle which is your behavior, your attitude, and the way that you feel towards yourself. Because that's what's going to manifest. But if somebody is extremely heavily judgmental towards you, um, this could also be somebody or you here, Aries, where this perfectionism or being too heavily harsh and judgmental. So a need for you to soften yourself. Go light, go easy, and go gentle because the chariot is about mother. It says angel of guidance. So you could have either a passed on loved one or there's guidance here. And the queen of wands. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Energy, Angel of Guidance, and Passion. You know, the Queen of Wands is Aries energy. So there could be somebody at a distance that's traveling to come see you or here. It's like you need to distance yourself from this energy. And it's like a fear that you are going to be judged by other people. But this is about you standing out. Queen of Wands doesn't give a flying flip-flop to the flip of what anyone thinks of he or she. They just do what they want. 
It means I feel whole and complete in my body. And I don't need any kind of external validation or approval that I'm good enough. I've always been good enough. There's also an emperor riding the chariot. So here, this is says maintain your independence. So if you're codependent or reliant on another person's, you know, communication or validation or approval, this person is heavily judg judgmental or, you know, can be very blunt in the way that they communicate because they're coming up from a place of hurt, pain, and nine of swords. Like this person lacks sleeps or um, there's just something. And here, this can also be enthusiasm, sensuality, sexuality, expression of so, of, of yourself. And receiving a lot of attention here. Or travel. Travel might inspire you as well. So even if you just go somewhere and travel... But it's like victory fast, quick. And maintaining your independence. Maintaining your independence is definitely a superpower for you. It's because then you're not codependent on another person or you don't rely on anyone. Right? And here with the Nine of Pentacles, this is about self-sufficient, self-reliable. You know your worth, you know your value. Internally, externally, taking really good care of your body and your temple, your health, wealth, and happiness. So always checking in with Aries. And in your blocked and challenged position is some kind of commitment. But this could be like a friendship. This could be a business partner. Um, there also is a choice or a decision or a need for you to be vulnerable and put yourself out there. Promote yourself. Because you're going to gain a lot of success and attention by doing so. Yeah, let's see what this lover's card is about. Um, lover's card can also be about siblings. And the Ten of Swords, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Energy. Um, somebody has heavy Gemini in their chart because Ten of Swords, Nine of Swords is Gemini energy and you have the lovers there with Gemini. And then you have the Knight of Cups. Knight of Cups is about you in pursuit of joy, pleasure, fun, happiness, and creativity, but being by water. This is also doing something nice or indulging, indulging in good things. This can also be a friend coming and saying, hey, do you want to just go out? <laughs> Let's go travel. Let's just get out for the day. Air your fur here, Aries. Um, and this Ten of Swords, it's completion. It's about releasing and letting go of a choice. It's been a really tough decision to cut this out. Um. And I feel like this person is, might project onto you. Like, where do you think you're going? But again, what you resist persists. And here, it's like 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah, so stick a fork in this. There's some kind of completion or closure with a commitment, whatever that commitment is for you. Knight of Cups and Death card, change, transition, and transformation that you're going through. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. I know it's uncomfortable, and but that's what I was saying about this Eight of Wands. It's like fear to do it anyways. Because you're the one that comes out victorious, or you feel so much more independent and solid in this energy. And with that Ten of Swords, it's a need for you to tra be transparent and vulner vulnerable and authentic to whatever this dead end is. This is a dead end. It's an impasse. Or a betrayal with somebody who you were transparent with or some kind of commitment. It could be job and career. Like Queen of Swords could be like a heavily judgmental boss. This person's never satisfied and it's because they lack here or like they, they don't sleep well. So um, 
or something, but I would just queen of swords, get a second opinion. So um, there also could be somebody giving you great advice or insight. They're stressing about having this conversation with you though, because they don't know how you're going to react. Or that's maybe how you're feeling. In your outcome, you have the Four of Cups. And the Four of Cups is about emotionally withdrawn from a person, place, or a situation. The milk has expired. The milk has curdled. And nobody wants to drink curdled milk. And it says indifference. So you and this person are just not on the same page. And that's okay. Right? So you accepting this person for who they are. Or you can move on and move forward. And Four of Cups is bored, discontent, and dissatisfaction. If you are bored or discontent and dissatisfaction, dot dissatisfied in any area of your life, that is your soul desiring growth right here. Angel of Guidance and your soul here is about the need for you to take back your own independence and be powerful in this energy. And complaining. This is my complainer card. So let's just say something didn't go the way that you wanted to. The first thing you want to do is blame this person. But that's a projection. It's like trying to find somebody to blame for your own problems. I'm not saying you're doing that. That can also be another individual, right? So this person could be an Eeyore or they're bored or discontent and dissatisfied. This is my boohoo complainer energy pit of complaints. Like no matter what you do or for your boss, they're never satisfied. They're always, you know, saying something mean or whatever, hurtful. But there can also be somebody who is stressed out. They have a lot of thoughts, but they haven't expressed it. So let's see what this uh, four cups is. And the three of wands. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. And the three of wands, it says indifference and freedom. Give yourself the gift of freedom. This is also expansion, growth, journey, exploring. And withdrawing, not getting distracted on what other people are doing, not getting distracted on social media, not getting distracted on, you know, people complaining to you. And then you're like, oh, well, I can solve that problem. Let people solve their own problems. You just keep doing you here. And then you have the world, which speaks of karmic cycle complete. Wrap this chapter up. Tie up loose ends. Give yourself permission to feel on top of the world and freedom. This is also putting yourself or promoting yourself on some kind of platform or here it's like moving relocation. Um, you were bored or discontent or dissatisfied with some kind of situation anyways. Three of Wands is also um, about partnership or making your next step. But you could also be complaining like, oh, my ships are never coming in or my ships have already set sail. I'm too old to do this. That's a lie. So that's why I said, pay attention to what you're telling yourself. Your ships haven't set sail. Some of your best days haven't happened yet. Indifference and freedom. So there was some kind of like butting of the heads or power struggle with a person. This is also Aries energy. So this means some kind of message. It's a disappointing message possibly that you have to deliver or there is a need for you to understand don't sit in this four of cups of apathy and emotionally withdrawn. Get back into your heart space because you can't pour from an empty cup. If you pour from an empty cup, you're going to attract an empty people. So here it's like a needing for you to get back into your heart space accept some kind of commitment or a change in contract here and here you're the one that gets freedom
yeah, and your ships haven't set sail. Like, um, I talk about whatever, the KFC guy. He didn't become Mr. KFC until he was like in his 70s. So whatever you want, you can have. But it's about you taking that control there. Be still. Yeah, it's like you want to rush through something or just handle something quickly. It's telling you to be still. Also, um, be silent. Be still, be silent. That is where your best answers are. Or a needing for you to this um, being really up in the head. It's like being too harsh or critical towards yourself as well. Like perfectionism. Like this has to be perfect. But that can also be a person around you. Right? And it's like, well, I'm going to do it this way. Because <laughs> I know my worth and value and I don't care. Yeah. Burning barrel. Burning barrel ritual. Leo just had this. And it's to let go. There's something that you could be gripping and holding on to, but what you don't realize is that there's some kind of strong pull or strong connection that brings you a lot of freedom as well. Yeah, like withdraw from something that's not satisfying you and go, go the distance with something else. This is also a need for you to be in silence and write down something on a piece of paper where you have forgiveness of the situation. Spend time with animals. That's about getting out. So getting in your chariot, going for a drive. See, you got bunnies here. Bunnies also speak of fertility, but they speak of anxiety as well. So um, I feel like you need to be a little bit, not ruthless here, Aries. But um, it's just like, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. And I'm going to be successful one way or another. It doesn't matter. Intuition. Pay attention to your intuition, but right now, how can you tap into your intuition when you're not in your heart space? Also, Cancerian energy here, mother, it's about you remothering yourself. This is also deep feelings or some kind of like creative project that you're working on. It's very successful or you've been very successful in it. Spending time with animals, that means getting out in nature. Also, animals are very therapeutic and they just love you to bits. You could also have some kind of like animal totem, animal spirit. So you have bunnies. Um, there's also, there's some birds up here. Those could also be like passed on loved ones sending you messages through animals as well. So like coming across, a, uh, you know, a stag or coming across a, uh, another animal. And then it says, be still, reconciliation. This is about reconciling differences. Wreath, sorrow over a loss. So maybe you wanted to reconcile with this person or this person wanted to reconcile with you. But um, yeah, it's like cut your losses and let go. Reconciling differences, meaning like, okay, I forgive this situation. I learned the lesson that I needed to learn. I know what I need to do now moving forward. And maintaining my independence is, is sexy, <laughs> right? And broken bridge, unsuccessful outcome to a problem right here. It's some kind of disappointing situation so but you're the one that gets the freedom and if somebody has indifference or just like they're bored in their own life so it's a projection right so mountain major challenge to overcome you're at the peak here because that's the ten of swords well family wishes come true Feather, someone you know is undependable and insincere. Yeah, um, you know, Gemini energy can be uh, Jekyll and Hyde. So just, you know, two-faced individual. If 
fire. Strong emotion, passionate love or hate. Vine, seek out information that will help you. And so if like, let's just say, um, because Queen of Swords could be a person that is like a mediator or a middleman or somebody who has great advice or insight, but there also could be um, a mother or somebody who is very mothering or somebody at a distance who um, motivates and inspires you to be the bigger person or um, getting a second opinion. So let's just say that, um, like if this is like some kind of person who's giving you advice or insight, this person is coming from a place of nine of swords, which is like stress, fear, anxiety, worry, um, sleepless nights. Um, so you might want to get another second opinion somewhere else, right? Carrot, opportunity or windfall in club. Someone will try to make you do something against your will. Um, you have to just be vulnerable enough to say no, that that doesn't work for me. I feel uncomfortable with that. Um, let me get back to you. Because this could be like blunt and pushy in a controlling situation or a controlling person. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how this resonates with you. Like, share, subscribe. And Aries, if you want to book a private reading with me, you can do so in the description box below. Click on the link. It will take you to the website and you can see the options there.